Jennifer LeClaire here with you, senior leader at the Awakening House of Prayer, founder of the Awakening Blaze Prayer Movement. Today I want to talk to you about trials. 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 It's almost like a dirty word. You know, in the book of James it says, you know, count it all joy, my brethren, when you fall into all kinds of trials. I remember as a young Christian when I would read that, I'm like, what? I thought James had some issues. I'm like, how can you tell me to rejoice? You don't understand what I'm going through. You don't get it. How are you telling me to rejoice? But it's because that James understood by the spirit, the outcome of a trial is greater patience. The outcome of a trial is greater wisdom. And trials are no fun. I've, I've yet to ever be through a trial that I found enjoyable. <laughs> but we can have joy in the trial. Hear me. The trial itself is not enjoyable, but we can find joy in the trial. You got it? Let me say it one more time. The trial itself is not enjoyable. It's not. I don't, I, I, I've never met anybody that went through a serious trial that said, I really enjoyed that. But nevertheless, you can rejoice. But here's something the Lord showed me this morning. It was actually through a dream that I had last night. I'm not going to share the dream. Uh, but there is grace for the trial. There's, there's many ways God can demonstrate his grace to you through the trial. Uh, one of them is, is through his power. You know, part of grace is, is, is power. You know, sometimes when you're going through a trial, especially if it's a physical trial, you just, you're just worn out. Your body is worn out. But, you know, your mind gets worn out, too. You know, I was listening last night uh, to, a, um, to some, some, some research. I like I liked documentaries. And I was listening last night to some research on sleep. And, and they say that it's actually not physical work that makes you tired. It's the mental issues. It's the worry. It's the fear. It's the, it's the drama. It's the strife. This is what actually makes you tired. Yes, your body will be tired if you do a bunch of, a bunch of work, but it's your mind. And studies are showing that if you'll sleep six hours, now I'm not giving you medical advice. I'm reiterating something for a spiritual point. If you get six hours of sleep, but then sleep one hour late in the afternoon or even early in the evening, that you'll actually add an hour of productivity to your day. Why? It's because your mind gets tired, especially if you work in a cerebral sort of a, 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 a uh, career like writing or being a doctor or something where you have to use your mind all day. I'm sure police officers as well. You know anything where where you have to use your mind. It's 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 the mind. So your mind can get worn out. And many times in trials, it's it's not so much against our body, but it's mostly against our mind. The battles in the mind. And even if you do have a battle in your body, there's you've still got a battle in your mind. And so it's like a double whammy when you get hit in your body. It's really a double whammy. But you, you've got, you feel like you don't have any more strength, you know, when you're going through the trial. So, so ask God to extend his grace, his power, and receive his strength. You know, if you think you can do it on your own, then you're, you're falling into the, the enemy's prideful plan for you. But the Bible says that God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And God will provide grace for the trial. He told Paul, my grace is sufficient to, for you. 2 Corinthians 12, verses 7 through 10. So to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from being conceited. Three times I pled with the Lord about this, that, he, that it should leave me. Three times. I probably would have prayed it more than that. But he said, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. So if you're going through a trial and you feel very weak, understand that his power is perfected in your weakness. Just press into that grace. Paul said, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, that I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. That's part of the power of fasting. Because when you fast, you're becoming weak in the flesh. That his strength might be manifest in you. Another way that God gives us grace in trials is a, is a, a, a greater awareness of his presence. Now you have to 
be mindful of him, but he's with us. You have to know that he's with us. You have to meditate on the fact that he is with you in the fire. He is with you in the valley. He is with you in the, he, he's in the desert. He is with you through the waters. He is with you. And the Bible says, if you draw near to him, he'll draw near to you. He'll ease your pain and your grief. And then he'll allow you to use that trial to help somebody else. You ever been in a trial and somebody really comforted you? You know how, how they comforted you? You know how they were able to be so effective in their comfort? Many, to, many times it's because they're comforting you with the comfort with which they've been comforted. In other words, they're able to relate to you because they have been through what you're going through. The best person to comfort you, other than the one who's just, you know, has the, the you know, just a really under, deep understanding and love of God, is someone who's been through what, you've gone, what you're going through and has some victory. Someone who's been through that divorce, someone who's been through that cancer, someone who's been through that battle in the mind, that heart trouble, someone who's been through the breakup, the, the, the broken heart, someone who's been through that because they can relate to you more directly. It's one thing to sympathize with someone. It's another thing to empathize, to actually have felt that way or something similar before. But God understands our infirmities. God himself understands if you can't find anybody else to stand, he can understand. And his presence is always with you. He's the God of comfort. And the third thing, is how God can give us grace in trials is provision. He'll still meet your needs in the middle of a trial. Whether it's your need for relationship, whether it's your need for, for, for whatever it is you need, whether it's a spiritual need or, or, or physical need, he'll make provision. And it really is true. I know some people get mad when I say this, but God won't let more come on you than you can bear. So if you are really going through it, obviously God sees you as strong enough to go through it. And he's doing something in you. He's not bringing the trial. Hear me. He's not bringing the trial, but he is bringing provision, power, and presence for the trial. He'll never let you down. There is grace for the trial. He might not always... Save that job that you wanted to save. You, you might stay sick longer than you wanted to stay sick. Your kids may be off in prodigal state longer than you want them to. But he has his hand on it. Romans 8 and 28 is true. God works all things together for the good to those who love him and are called according to his purposes. It's true. And his grace really is sufficient. Lean into his grace when you're in the middle of the trial. Thank him for his grace. Lean into it and understand and know that he will respond in love. Amen. I want to pray for you. I want to remind you that God is good and go equipping is good and, and, and prayer is good. If you want to be part of my mentoring and prayer and intercession program or the school of the seers or the, how about this supernatural life coaching? You can find that online, supernaturalcoach.com, schoolthespirit.tv, all sorts of resources. Get involved with what is going to help you advance in your life. Invest in yourself. God is good. Father, I thank you for the anointing to pray. I thank you for the anointing to overcome. I thank you for the anointing to walk through trials. I thank you for the anointing to break the yoke. Help us, God, to see what you see in the midst of the trial so that we won't be timid and lose faith and lose heart and grow weary in well-doing. We know if we don't grow weary, but if we keep pressing through the trial in due season, we're going to reap a harvest. We're going to reap a harvest of patience. We're going to reap a harvest of joy. We're going to reap a harvest of whatever, whatever the enemy was trying to, to kill, steal, and destroy in that trial. We're going to get the spoils, the harvest. And we're going to glorify you in Jesus' name. Hope you enjoyed the podcast. JenniferLeClaire.org is where you'll find me online.